the air more than anything this year um now unfortunately last week we got a unfortunate uh, cancellation where pacquiao and errol spence was no more simply because unfortunately spence got a torn retina uh, during the re- during a routine eye exam now the funny thing is too is me and elby were talking about it i told elby about this and the first thing he you know he said is like man uh, uh, who's putting hands on him like that's a little, that's a, I think that's a little, everyone saying like who's putting hands on on Spence because there was a there's, there's a video a clip that's floating around you know that shows Spence not looking as sharp as he should have but hey it's 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 sparring sparring so you know you don't really put too much spark you know too much uh um anything emphasis into that you know yeah fighters do catch work in sparring you know even the greatest of fighters do you know and it's like oh okay yeah that's nothing uh, I mean hell I mean we have I mean. You remember when Mike Tyson got knocked down by Greg Page prior to him losing to James Buster Douglas. You know, shit happens. You know, sparring sometimes does or does not tell a story of what happened. But in this case, you know, people were kind of, oh, no, that's just sparring. But then you see that Spence got a torn retina. You get a torn retina, that means someone was putting some hands on you, consistent hands, for him to tear your retina. <laughs> you well, know. I mean, also in, in the mugshot of, you know, his accident, one of his eyes look pretty fucked up. No. Yeah, and oh. and this and, and but the thing is too is like I mean they're supposed to do the exams like I mean if, if the, for the type of car accident that Spence had like I mean they this should have been an up and down thorough in, examination of his injuries especially his eyes like oh now see I heard something about that I don't know who somebody posted it on Twitter they were basically saying if it happened due to the uh, accident. The Texas Commission isn't as thorough as the Vegas Commission, so he probably had it in the Danny Garcia fight too. Yeah, and it, and it would probably and it would probably would make sense of some of the shots that he actually got caught with by Danny Garcia too, as well, and how he reacted to it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and, and that's another thing too. Like, and, and here's where I, I mean, not I mean, obviously with Tor Retina, like if you know eye injuries, like a Retina is a very serious injury like it's not injury that you can just be like okay you come back like the the best of fighters have had their careers altered or ended by retinal injuries whether it's a retinal detachment or a retina or whatever like because retinas you need your retinas to actually see people like you know so people when people are talking about oh you know Spence will be back in six months like do you not want this man to actually be able to see out of both of his eyes, like really. Are you just an idiot saying that he was ducking. I'm like, oh that, yeah, he was faking. He was ducking. I mean, who, yeah. who fakes an injury uh, like that? Who like, fakes an yeah, eye yeah. injury of all things? Who yeah. fakes an eye injury for the, your biggest payday of your career against a, a 40 year old that you should be able to beat? <laughs> that you're the favorite, yeah. The yeah, favorite. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is why you gotta filter what you hear in boxing because you hear you'll hear a lot of stupid shit like yeah. that and. Mm-hmm. The like, quick fix for wow. Ugas is a little suspect. I mean, I, I, I'm not knocking out. I mean, the, this, the Ugas thing, maybe it comes reading too much, too much boxing Twitter. Yeah, well, it depends. Like, I mean, first of all, I mean, I mean, to me, like, it was between that or people that think that Spence is like, you know, Spence's career is not in jeopardy. His career is in jeopardy, people. Like, because just like LB mentioned before, like, there are commissions that are not as thorough, and there are commissions who are super thorough, like the New York Commission. Like they, 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 they won't. If you had like any, if you, if you had like laser surgery, they, they, they're on your ass about it. Like you know, much less a torn or detached retina. So it's like, you know, I mean, thankfully it was caught. You know, so Spence probably has a good chance of recovery. But you should, people should not want him to get back in the ring soon. Like they should let him, let his eye actually like heal properly, because you don't want him to have, uh, have a, that Abner Mara's look. Or a, a Antonio Margarito look, or end up like Lehman Brewster, or Israel Vasquez, or yeah, or worst case scenario, Israel Vasquez. Although he Brewster's his, uh, condition is damn near almost the same, really. Yeah, the, the only difference is, I mean, I think 
Brewster, from what I, because I, I do follow him, because he'd be saying some stuff sometimes. Brewster's, he, he has some vision in there, but it ain't like clear vision. Like you could tell, like if you, if you see his picture of his eye, you, you could tell it's still cloudy. You know, it's, I mean, his eye, his eye will never be the same. And Antonio Margarita, his eyes are all, like it, it looks like he actually has a fake eye, because it looks like he sees a ghost every day. You know, and. And then Morris, obviously, you see him on the broadcast. I mean, they, they put the shades on him, and you know why. Because, you know, his eyes... The eye is bothering us. Yeah, his eye, he's cockeyed. From that his was movie. a great idea. That, that eye bothered me for a bit, the first couple cards. Damn, man. <laughs> yeah. I was just playing around, but it legit bothers you? Shit. And, a little and, bit. I, 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 shit, I was complimenting. Like, every time I saw him without his shades on, I was like, yo, it was like... Cause, I mean, because... Because it just checked because you know that dude took dude has serious eye damage and stuff yeah. like that and like they need to like and clearly it wasn't fixed the way it needed to be fixed so yeah they it, like, to... it like progressively got worse too because at first it was all right the next the next time on Showtime it should look worse and I was like, <laughs> yeah yeah yes and so yeah I mean, I don't know, I'm, I'm an Abner Mariah's fan so I'd probably just overlooked it because I like his commentary and he does speak well but I, I I can see it being a distraction for people so I can understand yeah. But I, just, so, I don't want the I don't want Spence to have to go through that shit. Oh, yeah. Right. So with Spence now, so like I mean, so Spence obviously now he has two belts, and then we're gonna wait to see what the WBC and the IBF does for that. But now you know, obviously Pacquiao Spence is history. So what PBC and probably was a quick turnaround. I mean, quick. And so they decided, you know what, we're gonna have, he's gonna fight somebody. So Pacquiao and or Dennis Ugas will now fight for Ugas's. WBA welterweight title in the main event. Yawn. <laughs> yeah, so if I think it's too, like this card is just like, is like, how can this card get any more mid? Here we go. I don't even think it's mid anymore. The card trash. There you have yeah. it. <laughs> That's how make it look yeah, like mid is mid could be if you know because it's not talk- even quality mid. This is like that twenty dollar bag of Reggie from a nigga on front of the corner store or some shit. Yeah, because when, when we when we talk about this, when we talk about it's original card before, like two of the fights were actually good. One shouldn't be there, and the other one was just like, yeah, you know, it shouldn't be there for Ugas. Now it's just like really only one fight in there is actually good, and it's not the main event fight, you know. And and then we and then we're still getting you know Ortiz versus Ortiz Guerrero and shit like that and. PBC trying to ruin itself. Y'all getting two guys, two Cubans who are known for putting on shitty dud ass performances in back to back main events. Yeah. And then Clearly, I don't care about y'all company. And then now, of course, I think the only fight that got that, uh, that, that got upgraded was the fight that was supposed to be on Uskateki Benavides, which is no more. Uh, Castro and Escondon, you know, is just like, cause, you know, which is not. I mean, I, I don't want that fight on, on a pay per view on the card either. So it's like, yeah, I mean, this pay, the on a card is definitely, it's not worth it. And then Pacquiao Ugas. Now, Ugas, yes, I know Ugas has his victories. He has the belt that Pacquiao wants back or wanted it back via, you know, from, um, decision by sanction and body stuff, getting it back in the ring because he got stripped. So I understand it because it actually closes up that, that little retarded WBA loop that went, that went on between them. But it's just like you, you, you can't get you can't get excited about Pacquiao Spence and then Ugas because like Ugas hasn't really fought a fight that you say okay you know I'm, I want to see this guy fight again. I mean, yeah, I th- you're doing the whole uh, Amir Khan shit. Let me just fight decent opponents until I could get a big fight. Trying to, but Khan was at least fighting decent opponents. Like Ugas is literally fighting like bottom of the barrel showbox opponents yeah like i mean the last time we saw him fight i mean he, he fought abel ramos and he won a split decision over that dude and he's and he got rocked and he got rocked by him a couple times in that fight so and this is no like, shit to ramos because um his his nephew is good his nephews is another young fighter that need to be getting in the mix now um, right but it's just like was naming guys earlier but um but it's, it's just because like, ugas has not shown the type of separation at least that the other welterweight a, a split decision over Abel Ramos. Yeah, and then you know, and then just going down his, I mean, going down his box rack. You know, obviously we, the Mike Dallas fight. <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, he basically got a mercy stoppage, and then the Omar Figueroa fight. He took Omar zero in a horrible in a fight. Yawn. 
And then the Porter fight, which is what he's really known for, you know, Porter, you know, obviously I mean, he, a glorified, it could have been a draw type fight. Yeah, but most people thought he lost, most people thought he won. And this is where I think this is where a lot and everybody of, thought he just looked mid. Right. Yeah, and, then, <laughs> and unfortunately this is where people think, okay, he's a top he's a top welterweight. But if you go a couple years more back, you know, dude went life and death with Thomas Delorme in a fight that he probably should have lost or could have lost. You know, so yeah. it's like one so yeah, he's and then he has the Jamal James win, which is which in hindsight is probably enhances his resume a little yeah, bit. That's his best win. And we don't even know if he could beat a Jamal James in the rematch right now. Right. You know, so I, yeah, he just he, he like honestly he's just a lucky dude. Yeah, I mean I think the stars are aligning for him now. Now, and this is where, this is where we, uh, this is where we talk about one. Now, if you've heard me talk about one forty-seven, I I should have one forty-seven. This every chance that I possibly get, I, I just need one reason I'll go in. You know, what I'm saying, and it's part of the reasons why because one forty-seven has does not clear out its divisions like other divisions do. Like you have a legit division full of fighters that are young and upcoming prime, and and the other half is the old inactive like you know i'm a keith thurman fan but dude like he this dude needs a fight like yeah like uh taylor ramirez needed promotion <laughs> yeah like you know, like the whole like the whole current welterweight debate era was put in question the minute that pacquiao got that decision over thurman you can't even really argue that he shouldn't have gotten that division uh the, the decision I mean, so, COVID helped that too. You 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 was having the same problem at welterweight when Keith Thurman and Sean Porter fought. Yeah, that shit just moving s- snail speed. Yeah, and and the thing is, and Manny Pacquiao in himself, the Manny Pacquiao is a legend. Like Manny Pacquiao has had wars that would that would that would do a lesser fighter in. You know what I'm saying? So like, I mean, the fact that he's able to actually take out a pro- one of the prime top welterweights, and I actually respect Keith Thurman too. So the fact the fact that it happened was just like uh, you know what can I say? I mean, it shit happened. It's asterisks by the whole welterweight division, like the guys like uh, Boots and Ortiz Jr. and and Ben and all of them, they're gonna have to kind of step in and and right the wrongs. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, because get to the point where now this current welterweight probably needs to start getting cleaned out, and then in in the fact that we have another. You know, we have another welterweight from the last remaining top welterweight from that era that's actually doing it. Now, if Ugas, now if Ugas loses to Pac, it's just going to be another stain on this welterweight era. Although Ugas is not the biggest player. Man, Pac has been in the last two welterweight eras, if you think about it. This is a guy who fought fucking Claudi, man. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true. I mean, how long is an era? Era in boxing is like at least, what, five, six years? Like... Yeah, I mean, Pacquiao was in the mix when, you know, when you had, you know, we had cats like the Punisher or Margarito or Cotto or Claudi yeah, or Shane like, Mosley, you know, you or guys who are retired. Like, he's, he's been in two welterweight eras now. Yeah. And he's still winning at the highest level. So, yeah, yeah he's, he's still, he's still like number one. He's still like number two, th- like in the top three. Right. At least he least number two. I can't put Crawford above him. And if, yeah. if you you could put Spence above him if you want, but Pacquiao got the biggest win at welterweight, so you you could clearly say you could say he's the best welterweight right now if you wanted to. Yeah, and and, and, and I don't think no one will be you know I don't think that's an argument. Except unless you're unless you're a Spence stand or a, or a Floyd <clears throat> stand, or you just don't like many Pacquiao. Yeah, we got, we got keep it a buck. <laughs> yeah. You know, what I'm saying? Saying, and now we get the Yugas fight, and it's like, oh. yeah, because I mean, because styles make fight, and this has a fight to be really stinky. Because if Ugas does not let, I mean, Ugas, I don't think, I mean, Ugas has never been knocked out yet. He's been, he's been put down before, <laughs> yeah, you know. But <laughs> don't you know how Pac career would look so much better if he knocks out you guys? Yeah. So Ugas got no chance then. Yeah, he stands a chance. I feel like he might try to spoil and get a win. Um, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Let me let me ask y'all this: um, if the fight's close or competitive enough, you we all know how Bob Abram kind of jobs you out and you know he sells you out and gets a decision against you. Yeah, you think PBC does that against Pop? Well, there's a reaction to Pop thinking that it might be his last fight. So if that's the case, I could see him, you know. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it depends if they, if they actually want. I mean, if they actually want to put their chips behind Ugas and try to build them up for maybe for whoever, you know. I mean, because who, it, who, it's who in the air. Thurman afterwards, or 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 Sean yeah. Porter or somebody. Sean Porter again. Yeah, I know Porter. You know, Porter, Porter does actually. Porter doesn't even want. It doesn't want the rematch. I'm pretty sure he doesn't. I don't think he said he was too eager to get back in the ring with him. Ugas does. Ugas. It's a sick fight. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. so. I mean, if it, I mean, I could see it happening. So I mean, but um, but it just, just is because it's Ugas. Like I, I have a hard time thinking that. I know why does it have to be? Ugas? <laughs> yeah, this, the, reason why, the reason why Ugas has a chance is because first of all, he's in his prime. He's big. He's physically strong. He's much taller than Pacquiao. He has the reach, and he's moderately skilled. Right, and when you add plus XP uh, from being in the parentheses uh, quotes uh, Cuban style of school of boxing, I heard all that sarcasm, bro. I know, I know. So, so yeah, you guys does have a chance. This is the fight of his life. Like, yeah, look. If, sometimes, if you're lucky, you want to push your luck. Him pushing his luck will go, will would be in his favor. If he tried to fight balls to the wall and try to just run over Pacquiao and overwhelm him, he could very well win or get clipped. (laughs) It's better to do that than try to just do just enough to win and then complain on on Twitter about, hey, you know, judges don't know my boxing. They don't understand my boxing. (laughs) Now, you know, you put a big steamy pile of shit on the top of the welterweight division. And now we're gonna be looking for Virgil Ortiz and boots to clean y'all the fuck up. Oh yeah, <laughs> we've been begging for that shit. So you you know like that's what we're looking at here. Um, but do I think uh, I was you know the smart man will put a little something on the fuckery upset of uh, you guys winning? Mm-hmm. I haven't seen the odds, but um, it's definitely worth a little you know something just to see because. Pacquiao has to be the most robbed, great elite fighter in my lifetime. Yeah, yeah. So you know, third time's a charm. It might happen again. Who who knows? But uh, Pacquiao should win a decision over dude. You know, one sixteen, yeah. one twelve, or, or one fifteen, one eleven. He'll probably drop you guys too. Yeah, like I mean, I'm thinking it'll probably be like a one sixteen, one eleven for for Pacquiao. Decision. I would love to see him damn knock him out though, like. Yeah, that'd be crazy. And then people are gonna want a Crawford Pacquiao fight, but then I'm just like, eh, been there, done that. Y'all been hyping that up. Just fight Ortiz or Porter. Yeah, because you have to realize something. Manny Pacquiao has been what I think, I think 24 world champions in his career, and you know, Ugas would be 25. Yeah, to knock him out. Yeah, yeah. that's whew. man. Yeah, like they they ain't too many fighters out there that's being 24 world champions guys have been world champions you know especially yep so i mean for floyd might be might might be the other one but you know it's different scenarios right there um so he always had like what 21 or was it 18 or 19 it's something like that it's it's a high number i don't know if it's more than pretty high pretty high i know it's above 16 i remember reading it yeah i don't know if i don't think it's 24 but it doesn't matter it's just a lot of good fighters Yep. Absolutely. So yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I yeah, definitely like. I mean, I would definitely love to see Pacquiao stop Ugas or whatever. But I don't want to see Ugas start, you know, start fighting stinky because he he he, he, he he's Actually. very capable of doing that. I Actually, mean, it's twenty four. Sorry, I me mean, interject, but yeah, Floyd is twenty four. Oh, yeah. Floyd got twenty four. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It, okay. Shit. That's what's up. Yeah, that's what it is. So, so yeah, it's like I mean, this is. Yeah, and back here, I mean, like I said, I mean, we're not gonna get. So they tied get up, to... then. Yes, they are. And yeah, yeah. Ugas would, Ugas would, you know, he would be the, he'd, he'd break that particular record. Just imagine if it was Spence and he broke the record that way. You know what I'm saying? Like that is so close, but so. That's crazy, man. If Pacquiao, we said it last week. If Pacquiao was the beat Spence, he top five boxer of all time. Like, yeah, maybe I mean, he, top three, like. Beating Thurman and then Spence back to back, like, are you fucking crazy? And like, taking yeah. their zeros, yeah. There's, yeah. I mean, yeah. at his age, like, you'd have a hard time trying to say that, yeah, he's he, he, he's not top five or top ten of all time, like, especially at, at, at advanced age at that. 
No, Dave, there's no he's way he's made his campaign strong. He's he's always he's gonna. I mean, he's already in the history books, but he just yeah. I, I mean, I mean, dude, dude is a first ballot Hall of Famer. Like, I mean, there's no question. Yeah. When his career yeah. is over, he t- he top fifteen right now to me. Like top yeah. twenty at the minimum. Yeah, it's an amazing career. Now, now Ugas, how, now Ugas does not only defeat, defeat Manny Pacquiao legitimately and decisively, then yeah, we'll give him his props. Like we'll straight up, up and down, we'll give him his props. Like this, like it, it ain't no reason to hate. Like I mean, it's just like I mean, if Ugas can do it, pull it off legitimately, and we all recognize it, then yeah, Ugas will get Ugas will get all the props in the world for, for pulling it off. And yeah. for, and then, but then this will also be another case of. Somebody taking Errol Spence's work because we all get Errol Spence's. Uh, the unfortunate thing with Errol Spence's and his best wins is either they either is that most people have already done it or they've already done it better than him. <laughs> you know, and that's the one thing. So it, it would be unfortunate. Um, so, so, okay, hold on. Pilot PJ, like, y'all, I know we, me and Pat gave our predictions, but like, what. What y'all see this Pacquiao or uh, you guys? Like, what's y'all prediction? Um, the one thing I would say for this fight specifically is it really depends on how Ugas wants to approach the fight. He is bigger. He has uh, he has variety in his punches. He goes to the body a lot, which Pacquiao has historically not been good at defending. He counters sometimes if you lunge in, but he always wants to protect his head more than his body. Um, but the thing is, with Pacquiao's skill set, it really just depends on what Ugas aims to do. The safe bet, I think, would be Pacquiao by decision. It would be even more amazing if there was a knockout. But I think there might, there'll probably be a knockdown one way or another. I'm not too sure who will get knocked down first, but there'll be a knockdown. Mm-hmm. This fight could low-key look like the Claudi fight if damn Ugas gets his damn um, earmuffs on. Yes, it can. Mm-hmm. Except, I don't know that they... If Jim Lampley's there, he might go bang, 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 either from his TV or if they put him on the mic, on the mic. But yeah, you know, we'll see. So, so, what's your official prediction? I'll just go with a safe bet and do uh, Pacquiao by decision. Scores. Yeah. Scores. Uh. Yeah, we get in like, detail, bro. Oh, I would say one sixteen, one twelve. Oh, oh, damn, we. Yeah. Oh, pretty much the same. So, hey, P- Pilot, what you think? I mean, I had the same score, 116, 112 as PJ. Um, for Pacquiao, for Pacquiao. Uh, oh, speak up louder, bro. I'm hoping it's a better fight. I'm, I said uh, 116, 112 uh, for Pacquiao, same as PJ. Um, I'm just hoping it's a better fight than we're expecting. Uh, I, I think it will be. I think uh, Ugas will come out, you know, hungry to win, get the biggest one of his career. So I just think Manny will be too much. I don't think I, I don't know if, I don't know if drop him, but I know that I think Manny will should win clearly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like I said, but I mean, honestly, we do understand that. Like, yeah, Ugas is in his prime, and then you have to realize that Manny Pacquiao himself is more, is a six round fighter these days. Like, you know, you have to, but you know, he he's not the whirlwind that used to fight hard for twelve rounds. Although he's very, although he's still dangerous for twelve rounds, you can't. Yeah, you, know. you can't sleep on him. Six round fighter means. You know he's 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 gonna he could win six rounds and be t- dangerous for twelve though. Mm-hmm. Like don't Absolutely. get it twisted. We're not saying that he just becomes like his arms fall off after the you know in round seven. You know right, and then you know he stops <laughs> moving and he and he, and he turns into a plotter or something yeah. like that. Like, yeah, you know, shout out to Thurman who, who found that out the hard way. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> he makes himself well as a veteran, you know. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, he always gets a second win somehow when it, when it needs to be. You know, it's that greatness gene kick in. Like, oh, I can't lose. Absolutely, man. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, it, unfortunately, it's the only boxing that particular for next weekend. You know, and I think boxing's getting uh, for the next couple weeks is gone, kind of, it's getting light. So, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll obviously we'll watch it because, like I said, we're boxing fans and we're hardcores and we watch all the shit. So, it's like, you know, and especially. I mean, don't worry, we got the Jake Paul card to look forward to, which, which looks pretty good. Yeah, and then we got, and definitely, definitely got some bosses to say about that for about for me at least. So I got different things about it, um, you know. That will, but it, I'm pretty sure it will probably bring the fuckery that that Pacquiao Spence would have brought. But hey, you know, let's see what happens with Pacquiao and Ugas, and 
the rest of this undercard. But watch it. Watch me while there's undercards where it's shitty on paper, but then every one of them is, but every one of them is bleeding like fucking stuck, like, stuck, stuck pigs and shit. You know. Yeah, because everybody wants to outdo the void. Spoil uh, Spence left. Yeah, exactly. It's like, wait. Uh, a minute. Well, I hope they're thinking like that at least. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. So, uh, honestly, I, I think I need to see. So I need to see a whole lot of blood in this on in this on this on this car, so 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 I can feel good about myself for watching. <laughs> yeah, for real. Cause... I, I'll, I'll be a bloodthirsty goat for this shit. <laughs> oh man, so yeah, so have we have, have we spit our bars on, on on this? Do we have anything else that we'd like to bring up, or do you know we start uh, wrapping up? We can wrap think... it up. <laughs> yeah, we can wrap it up. Yeah. Word, word, word. So, uh, so PJ, man, tell us uh, your final thoughts. Final thoughts is uh this was a very boxing card dense weekend of fights um so that was a lot of things to keep track of and some disappointments here and there and some random fuckery moments um overall i would say that hopefully we'll see how the next upcoming cards will be especially with the random not random but the last minute replacement of getting ugas to fight pacquiao and all those other things um Oh yeah, and also it's just like a simple boxing lesson. If you're going to move around the ring, make sure you're within punching range so you can still do something to fill in the gap. Because staring Absolutely. contests don't work. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for me. That's what it is. And your uh, pilot, your final thoughts? Um, yeah, good podcast today. Uh, you know, this weekend was kind of like a buffet of boxing. You know, it wasn't really top entree special but you know had something for everybody um yes, hoping ne- hoping next week you know it's salvageable um maybe ghost guerrero and victor ortiz will turn back the hands of time but i doubt it because <laughs> uh, um, i even know what the other the last the last fight is on that i mean just replacing it but but anyways uh yeah ring game radio on, on every platform you can think of yes sir hey lb final thoughts Oh, oh, damn! My bad. Uh, I was actually reading a um, a message from Prolific about the cartoon because we working on that shit. Uh, hey, but uh, final thoughts. Um, overall, this boxing weekend, I probably rated a B minus. All right. You know, it had its uh, maybe a C plus. It, it had its bright spots, but it, I felt like I still needed some more, more violence. So it didn't really uh, hit like that. But um, and then next week hopefully makes up for it. Even though that's a constellation of constellation prizes. Yep. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see what it do. But um, <clears throat> other than that, you know, shout out to the rest of the squad, Ring Gang, Radio, um. Uh, Big Rome Top 5 uh, Clanarchy The Sample Genius RTDZ um, Prolific Genius And um, PJ The Fight Arc No wait Damn why I feel like I'm missing somebody DZ bro I said DZ Okay DZ Clanarchy King P Oh yeah 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 yeah. I was gonna mention King P. <laughs> Shout out King P and, and and PJ's up here letting me shout him out like he ain't on the fucking show. So hey, yeah, <laughs> PJ, PJ probably loved it. You know, just enjoyed the attention. You know, he's like, like, you know what? I'm here and I get a shout out. <laughs> Fuck that. Okay, ring gang. <laughs> but yeah, Yo, uh, the time out. on the bench was great. Yeah. <laughs> But well, well, shout out to everybody. Shout out to everybody that fuck with us around the world. Uh, Podomatic. Y'all just keep downloading that shit, spreading the word. YouTube, TikTok, everything. We taking over. Real boxing. No bias bullshit. You know, it's coming from the heart. Real shit. You know, we might rub you the wrong way, but we rubbing somebody the right way. So, <laughs> facts. I mean, you know, this may not be for you on this episode, but. You might fuck with something else, so you just keep tuning in. Absolutely. But other than that, um, peace. We got some uh, big shit in the in the plan, so just stay tuned. Yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely, I cannot wait. Uh, so for myself, 
I mean, obviously, shout out to King P. I know King P, you know, he was out here doing his thing, you know, doing his thing today, you know, but, uh, yeah, you'll definitely hear from him, like, you know, you know, later on in the week or next week or whatever. Um, but, yeah, you know, definitely, you know, yeah, Podomatic, yeah, Podomatic went crazy. Good Lord. I mean, it, I mean, it feels good that people that are out there that love our stuff like that. But, yeah, if you, but if you're one of those people, yeah, let us know. You know, like I said, you know, let us know, man, you know, because we, we, definitely, we definitely like to engage if someone with our list, especially if someone who, who clearly people who enjoy our stuff, just just looking at our stats, and then obviously you know uh, we have that and Anchor, and then we have TikTok and you know the Google, Apple Podcasts, all that, and especially our YouTube and our website, you know, yeah, definitely you know, especially at YouTube, man, just sub to our content, you know, and we we got the best shit out there, you know, tell your friends about us, and so their friends can tell their friends, and then we can all be friends. You know what I mean? Because, like I said, we do this shit for y'all and whatnot. Because uh, we love this shit. We love doing this shit. And, uh, so yeah, same, and also on our website, too. Yeah, definitely visit the website. You know, you know it's, it's a nice little summary of what we do, what we're all about. Uh, so, yeah, for myself, Pat Scorpio, the New England representer. For LB, Shuttleworth the God, the Go Artist, a.k.a. Running is Not Boxing. You know, for PJ, the Fight <laughs> Architect. And also for Conscious Pilot, you know, this has been another wonderful episode of Real Talk, where as always, it shit's real, we talk about it. So until next time, peace.